Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show and a review of the weekend's action north and south of the border. No doubt about the main talking point, yet another manager sacked. Lee McCulloch now out of Kilmarnock after that 2-0 loss at home to Ross County, Ruffy. Yeah, I think uh, when it happened, I think we were all caught by surprise. Uh, we, we spoke to Lee before the game. He said he had a good working relationship with the owners. Uh, and that he thought obviously that was what would see him through if things went pear-shaped but as we've seen on numerous occasions when the fans don't like uh, what they see uh, the board act very very swiftly and this is what's happened yet again OK, give us your opinion on whether they pulled the trigger too quickly here's his records since the start of the season yeah, I would have thought, you know, that uh, I always an impression that uh, there are three or four teams still down there, catchable. Uh, obviously, his record uh, hasn't been impressive, particularly at home. I would have thought the Partick Thistle game coming up after the international could have been the dividing time to then make a decision. If he wins it, obviously he gets a, an extended run. If he didn't win it, I think that would be more realistic of a chance to to sack him. Yep, I, I thought they uh, just were a little too hasty. And, and again, we're now in this situation where people are not even allowing anyone the chance to get the full card of playing against all the other teams before they start pulling the trigger on this one. The Kelly fans are hard to please at the best of times. Did he make too many new signings in the summer? If you have a look at some of the players that he brought in, a lot of experience in there. I think seven of them started in the game at the weekend against Ross County. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest problems uh, at Kilmarnock uh, in recent years that uh, even the previous manager thought it was wise to bring in maybe eight or nine players from down south and, and think they would fit in right away. It happened. It was OK initially, but then it went a wee bit pear-shaped. I think Lee, again, has identified that uh, he needed to get rid of a right few players and bring in some more. And again, that takes time for players to settle. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I, I just think at Kilmarnock, it, it hasn't worked all the time. I think there was a wee glimpse of a hope of going up to Aberdeen and drawing one each. And everybody, the board, the, the manager, the players would say, OK, maybe this is the corner being turned. But unfortunately, the home games haven't produced that and that's what the downfall has been. OK, uh, let's look at uh, the potential candidates for the job now. Uh, the director, Billy Bowie, said he's looking for someone with experience. I think he should be looking for a, an experienced manager from you know, the United Kingdom. I think if they go down the foreign route and that mm -hmm. type of manager wants to bring in, naturally, his own style of player, suddenly you're getting, getting into a real financial mess, I think. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, I think it's, it would be good to bring in a manager who knows the particular players who's at Kilmarnock at the moment. He's obviously seen them or come up against them. He'll know exactly the, the, the guys that he can work with, the guys he can maybe turn it round. And again, like all clubs, the, the new manager coming in will have a CV. There will be expectations that, that, that what they want to happen throughout the year. And for me, Jim McIntyre's the man. You know, if Jim McIntyre was to go to an interview and, and asked, you know, uh, what can you do for our club? And he said, well, I took Ross County to a cup final. Won it. And won it. I took them to top six, you know, and uh, I think I can do that for you. That would be good enough for me to see the credentials that he's had to give him the job. OK, we always like to see games that are competitive. We want to see uh, teams have a go, especially the champions. Celtic are on this unbelievable run. It was 57 undefeated for Celtic as they welcomed Hibernian into Celtic Park. Uh, they took the lead, looked as if it was going to follow a familiar route, but Neil Lennon's side had a real go and almost won it in the end, Ruffy. Yeah, they certainly did. They uh, obviously got off in the wrong foot and then the, the, the first goal, the Callum McGregor scoring a wonderful goal, you know, by of ability, bags of composure in the box and, and took his goal very well but obviously as you said their Hibs were always on the front foot, they weren't going to sit back, they weren't going to shut up shop, they were going to try and, and, and take uh, their chances when they came along and they did take their chances in particular the wee boy McGinn who had a tremendous strike. Uh, I think uh, Brendan Rodgers seemed happy enough with the way uh, the opposition decided to set up against them. Are one of those teams that on their day you know they can they can perform really well. You know Neil had them set up in a diamond, set up really well, pace up front with the boy Boyle. Anthony Stokes can has got a bit of quality and they get energy behind that. Um, so I was really impressed by them as a as a collective, and like I say they've got good energy in the team, good physicality. 
and that was a real test for us to do. You know, after all the games that we play and and, and not just the physical but the mental uh, exertions that go into that. But I was proud of my players. I think congratulations as well to, to Hibs. Like I say, they played a very, very good game. And uh, and I'm sure Neil will be really happy with, with how his boys played. Two goals for Callum McGregor, two goals for John McGinn, both of them staking their claim for a Scotland call-up. Um, do you think either of them will start for Scotland? No, I don't, Peter. I, I think the two of them uh, will be on the bench. Uh, I, I think there might be at some stage of the game where you could uh, bring them on, uh, depending on how the score goes, uh, obviously. But both of them have got something uh, to add to the Scotland team of the future. And, and who's to say one of them might not be a match winner at some stage of the game this week? Well, uh, Hibs got the point from Celtic Park. Um, can they build on that? Uh, the Hibs boss, Neil Lennon's not too sure about that. God knows. God knows. You know, we don't play until two weeks' time and... You know, this team can be a bit Jekyll and Hyde. Subconsciously, they raise their game for the big games, and then when the expectation lifts a bit, they can let themselves down. So they've got to take a lot from the game today and try and transfer that into other games as well. It's, e it's not easy, like, but... I mean, we could easily have got beat 4-0 today, you know, but their drive and their concentration levels were great. I need that every week. I need that every week and that quality and that belief. Um, but we won beaten away from home. We've made a fantastic start and almost caused a brilliant upset today. OK, if Hibbs managed to run Celtic close at Celtic Park, then Aberdeen are certainly uh, having a real go in the league as well. They're level on points with Celtic, 20 points. Celtic have got a better goal difference, but it was a good win for them uh, and a great hat-trick for Adam Rooney. Yeah, it certainly was. You know, Obviously, when you get a player of that ability who, who we know can score goals and uh, he's been left out, and like all good players, you know, they want to be on the side, they want to show the manager that they can score goals and he took his opportunity to come in, a different kind of striker from the other striker that he's got but at the end of the day, you want a striker just to hit the back of the net and that's what he did. Yep, yeah, OK, uh, let's have a look at the results over the course of the weekend. Uh, if uh, the results are anything to go by, Alan Archibald should feel slightly worried after that 3-0 defeat against Motherwell. I hope the Partick Thistle board are made of sterner stuff, Ruffy. Yep, uh, I think the next three games are very, very important. Obviously, starting with the Kilmarnock game, he desperately, we can't keep sitting saying, you know, yeah, they're playing good football, they're good to watch. You need points in the bag, and uh, certainly the next three games that are coming up, you, they'll have to do that. And do you think Neil McCann's slowly but surely getting it together? He left it late for the win mm -hmm. over Hearts, but they got it in the end through Kerr Waddle. Yeah, all credit to him. You know, he's threw a, a few young players into the team. You know, at, at the boy O'Hara was out for a long time, but he's come back. I really, really like him. Uh, and he got a wee break, we wee rubber of the green and uh, got a win. So, yeah, they'll be quite confident. Uh, more often than not, um, you're talking about Rangers with Pedro Cascina, the centre of attention. If you win games, then suddenly the manager's problems pale into insignificance. They won on Friday with a 4-1 win, but the, the Kenny Miller story won't go away. Kenny played in the development squad in a 5-2 win at Brentford. He's just getting on with it. Um, I feel as if this one's only going to be resolved by either Kenny just slinking out of Ibrox sadly in January or Pedro Cascina going before him. Yes, I think uh, for me, I think it'll be the, the second option, uh, obviously, if he doesn't get the results. Uh, I hate to see it happening to a, a player who's been at a club and been a great servant at a club for a long time. I hate to see things like this, some fans turning on the player uh, and it's not something obviously that I like to see happening so I, I really think that this whole thing should be cleared up and put right in front of everybody and let everybody know exactly what it is and then you can make your mind up because the manager can't go in front of the cameras and say no I don't have a problem with Kenny Miller and then all of a sudden he's playing with the under 20s you know he's not in the squad you know there's a problem so just face the problem and deal with it and instead of having everybody calling Kenny for this and for that, you know, and uh, and just get on with it. OK, uh, let's have a look at the championship results from the weekend. And uh, the one that uh, just screams out there is, of course, uh, Dundee United 3-1 at Dunfermline, which was a great result. And let's not forget St Mirren winning and not playing well against uh, Brecon. They're top of the table. No, you're right. We all looked at the Dunfermline-Dundee United game and this was a, a scoreline of intent. You know, who was going to maybe get to the top of the league, go on an extended run make a wee gap for everybody else so we all thought whoever won this one 
would do that. We'll have to wait and see whether it is Dundee United who can have that bit of consistency. But you're right, you know, St Mirren for a long time on Saturday, it was one each and it looked as if it was going to be another one of these games that stopped them for their momentum. But they didn't, they got the win, so they'll be high as well. Here's a look at the results from League One and League Two as well. League One, first of all, and uh, I think Forfar with the 1-1 draw at Stranraer were looking still to replace Gary Bolin, and it's going to be Jim Weir who's left Elgin City to go in there uh, and take over at Forfar. Albion Rovers actually uh, with their win over Wraith Rovers, the first time they've defeated Wraith Rovers in 32 years. Uh, as far as League Two is concerned, here's the full-time scores. Uh, Stenhouse Muir with that 3-0 win over Edinburgh City, Gary Jarden deciding enough is enough after eight years at Edinburgh he's decided uh, to leave the club but Stenny unbeaten in the last seven games in League 2 and going really well. Um, OK, what about the uh, Premier League in England, Ruffy? Because uh, if we're looking at the nature of the sackings down south, then quite simply... Ronald Koeman's on a shaky <laughs> deal. Yeah, he certainly is. I think it's the amount of money that he spent. You know, that he hasn't had the kick on from that. Obviously, toiling in Europe as well. So, yeah, he needs wins just like every other manager, but it doesn't look as if it's coming. Yeah, shaky nail, shiggly peg, call it what you will. Um, I watched them. They were absolutely woeful against Burnley. And, and Burnley, for me, deserve great credit because Sean Dice side scored a wonder goal. Mm -hmm. Great passing. Yeah, but even from the start of the season, uh, he set his stall out, you know, not to be an attractive side, just to dig in there and get results. And that's what he's doing. And that's why they, they are where they are in the league just now. Yeah, if you have a look at the Premier League results from the weekend, Ruffy, I mean, I can't pick between them. Man United, Man City, just going great guns, they've got goal scorers from all over the park, uh, De Bruyne scored a wonder goal at uh, Chelsea and United, I mean Lukaku mm -hmm. keeps scoring but if he's not scoring there's others chipping in. Yeah and they're all making chances as well, if you're a, a Man United supporter you're having a great year, you, you're seeing the old Man United you know, free flowing, scoring goals spectacular goals, but for me obviously the big result was Man City against Chelsea, two rivals going for the league as well and City came out on top in this one Across Europe, uh, disturbing scenes in uh, Spain and of course I'm talking about uh, Barcelona where people were trying to just go to the polling stations, Ruffy, to cast a vote on whether Catalonia should be an independent country away from Spain. Um, you know, they say politics and sport shouldn't mix, but quite clearly... Uh, it has because Barcelona's match against Las Palmas, they decided that that match would be played behind closed doors in an act of solidarity with the uh, people of not only the city of Barcelona, but the area of Catalonia. Yeah, I think we saw how passionate a lot of people were when we went for the referendum. Uh, we know how uh, people, once they, they, they want things to happen, they, you know, they... they they're so passionate about everything and we've been in Barcelona we know what they're like over there you know even their football and their politics as well but this has been ongoing for a long long time and uh, it has to be resolved as well yeah uh, I think uh, you know rather than going down the political road strongly on this one uh, I think it's got a long road to to run the last thing that uh, footballers want to see is you know the people of the area being beaten just uh, for uh, the right to go and vote peacefully and I think Gerard Piquet's interview after the game uh, quite simply summed it up. He was a footballer at the top of his game, uh, you know, in tears, basically saying, if this continues, if people see my support for uh, Catalonians as a problem, then he will step aside at international level for Spain. That's how strongly he and many others feel about this. Yeah, I think that's why Barcelona do so well. The players are so close to the supporters. They know the belief that they've got there. They're so passionate, not only about the team, but Catalonia as well. And uh, that can only be good for them. OK, uh, we will see how that all plays out, how it's resolved. I think it's got a long way to go, but Barcelona, uh, a club that tries to stay neutral, has almost certainly uh, got firmly behind uh, the people of the area there. So, from Barcelona, from English football and from all the divisions in Scotland, hopefully you'll keep watching Peter and Ruffy's football show. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, and uh, go to at PLZ Soccer on Twitter. You can also download the app for plzsoccer.com where you'll get exclusive interviews, news from football, not only in Scotland, but south of the border in England and 
right across Europe as well. From Ruffy and myself, Peter Martin, thanks for watching.